So we're gonna do another prion. So a prion is a standard way of doing something in chess. So this one is called burying the bishop. So burying the bishop, you know. Okay, so black play bishop g4 and the white play h3. Black should have take should have taken, you know, on okay. f3. Or really he should have gone back to e6 to cover d5. But this is just the example. So because he went to, to h5, he can play g4, and then the bishop is buried behind the pawns. Where did the king He is. He is. But instead of moving the bishop back, he to you with the knight? You could probably do that, but I don't think it works you know, in that position because the king can go to g2, and then the rook can come over. But this is good to remember. You know, so let me go back to, to the game where I, where I first saw that. So th this is actually in that book, Chess Fundamentals. Okay. Yeah. So if I if I take something from a book, I'll try and you know reference um, where it came from. So <clears throat> Camarato was black. I think I showed this game before, right? So I, I just want to, to to get. The concept, right? So this is this is called the four knights opening because th there are four knights. Okay. So, but <laughs> so he went to three. So, so see, he went to e five. So he played um, H, and he did an exchange. He should, you know, he should have got, gotten rid of the, that bishop instead of going to h four. He should have taken on f6, and after taking then h3, so so your bishop can, can come out, and because okay. the pawn is you know is in the black square like we've seen many times, this bishop is not that good, you know. So he didn't do that, so he went c5 first. But this is kind of a tricky move because he's trying to provoke 95, which he did, and then g5, because now. It looks like you could take with a knight, right? So if so, taking with the knight does that work? But I think it would. Why not? So I think uh, that would take But what if I go back to f three? Exactly. Hey, John. So, so if you take the knight, obviously, you know, he even if you go back down down with the bishop after knight takes, then queen f three, you know, white is gonna have, you know, it's gonna have an attack. But it, it, does, it, it doesn't work because, like I pre said, I can just take the knight, and if you go back, I can go back to e seven, not f six. You know, I go, go to e seven and then f f six. The knight is gonna be safe. Files yeah, but you're, you're a piece up. You know what I mean? So, yeah, if you, you got queen d2, but you know, I can, you know, cover the pawn, and then your rook, you, you can use the rook, and then, you know, <clears throat> so it doesn't work. So, he, so he took on f6, and then he went to g3, but now the bishop is buried behind the pawns. So, the only way, and you know, I didn't even realize the last week in one of the games we saw. So, John, this happened in one of the games, and I go, I'm, I'm gonna go back and show you. And so, you know, well, he he buried it even more now because Commissioner to four, and then he extended to f three, and now it's very hard for White to bring that bishop into the game. It's pretty much impossible. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so you have to like give a point up. Go to h2, f3, g1, to then be able to bring it into the game. You know, so, Kamablaka was playing black, right? So he plays f6, and if you play h4, and then take, I'm going to take with the h pawn. Not the f pawn, because then the e pawn is going to be weak. So, you know, most of the game revolves around that. See, so you take the h pawn, because essentially, black is playing with the piece up. This bishop is okay, you know, looking at the, uh, you know, this diagonal, but this bishop is not doing anything. So, you know, 
he did a little trick and then he but see he's trying but he just you know came back the bishop is still is still you know buried and now for taking the pawn we are again maintaining the you know the domination over the bishop and at this point you know he resigned because he's going to push his pawn that the rook is controlling the square the bishop is controlling the square so he's just you know and then the bishop in g3 didn't play anymore so well that's his nickname <laughs> yeah so so in this game look at after g 4 i actually did that so now the bishop is buried same thing you know same strategy and i didn't even realize you know that that's see and if if they take that's why i kept the bishop on this diagonal so they, he, he he couldn't use a diagonal so uh, and then so essentially the bishop is still out of the game i'm going a little fast because i showed it last week you know and then you take with the h pawn and then you keep all your pawns together and the bishop is out of, out of the game so i think eventually you know finally but then because my bishop i kept it in this diagonal you can't really go into the game right away you have to go to d1 and even if you go to d1 and c3 you still hitting my pawns you know and <clears throat> so whenever you can you know obviously that's, that's a good thing to do and then i did the fiddle of ring and you know so the bishop is out but the bishop is still not active in the game he's you know he's only one now the king is you know finally is out but then you know now ended up winning the game so keep that in mind you know so <clears throat> when well you played three games well, yeah, I, I showed it last week. So, you know, in the book, my system. This is talked about. This is called putting the questions to the bishop. Like, what, what, what are you gonna do? Are you taking the knight? Are you going back? Are you going to h4? You know. So, but that was a huge mistake right here. I mean, after this. It is the beginning of the game, but white is pretty, pretty much What's lost. What's the percentage of time to take the knight in this versus going to this. h4? Is there any good time to go to h5? I've seen that mistake. Or is it a continuation? Yeah. So now he played, because remember, because the bishop, the bishop is trapped behind the pawns, right? If you exchange all the pieces, which that was what Capablanca did, you are essentially playing a piece up. Right. Like you're not a piece up, but because of the position, you are a piece up. Yeah, because we, yeah, because this bishop is out of the game. Yeah, it's like a pawn. Okay. You know, but, because look, look, he exchanged everything, and then he played f6. Now this bishop is behind a barrier of black pawns. Wow. So, so how how do you bring this bishop into the game? You have to play king here, bishop here, bishop g1, f4, and give a pawn for free, and then f3. So what's the continuation for black? Like, so now what's the play for black? Like, well, because he work to be, and he gonna find the pawns down. Exactly, because that's it's, it, right? Because essentially you are, you know, and then if he tries to do that. And then you take with the, with the h pawn, and the bishop is still behind the pawns. And then you know you essentially here you play c4. That's a very instructive move. That's that's a great maneuver, maneuver to break out the pawns. Okay. You know because you don't want to go before because then it's very hard. You know you will you will not be able to break into you know. So you go right here and then you take with the rook and then you know this pawn is a little weak but it doesn't matter because you can define it with the bishop. You know c7 and then double on, the, on this pawn this pawn is also weak oh wow i see that you know and, and look at the, look at the bishop i mean you can bring it but you need you need what like five moves you need one two three and then four mm -hmm. and the bishop is still not in the game really you know it's just on g1 and you can take it out but it's, it's still not out so be very careful with that you know because like i said in this game so you're saying, like, be careful when you go, like, 
you kind of want to take on F6, right? Because if that bishop or, is or bring it back this way. Bring it back to because, okay, even if this in this game, we are kind of... Yeah. Is it safe to say it's 90% to take a knight or retract? Well, it, going to H file? well, and I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. Because remember, if you're playing like a queen's gambit, and you have a pawn on d4 and on e3, and you have your pawns, mm -hmm. on, on, you know, on dark squares, then it makes it's like when I play the English, I always take the knight because I'm going to play in the white squares. But if the game is open, then you shouldn't take it because because then the bishop are, are better. But if you plan on keep, if the game is closed and you plan on keeping it closed, then you should take it. Oh. Yeah, look it. So in this game, look it. In this game. Well, I took his bishop, but even if I didn't take the bishop, I w if I would put a play here, I w so let's say just for to show my the ideas, I, I go I go to g5, and he goes he goes to 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 f6. I go e3. He goes bishop e7. Taking on f6 is okay here because when you take with the bishop, you are hitting a wall of pawns. You know, so, but I have to be careful to not let the guy activate his black bishop too much. Here I can even go to d3. And after, you know, after we exchange, he has a bishop, but it's not an active bishop because all the pawns in the center are in white squares. Right, so you, you know what I mean? And, and, and then I, I can castle, I can rook b1, b4, b5, and then, you know, try and weaken these pawns. You know, so as long as the center is closed or, or semi close, you can, you know, exchange, you know, and it's like, so, hold on. So, like a, a typical um, position that you know that I play um, in the English, right? Bishop here. Let's go here. Castle. Bishop d5. D3. So, in this case, I always take on f6 because after you take, you know, with the queen or with the bishop, because you have your own pawns in dark squares, your bishop is never reactive. So, I'm gonna play knight f3. Or even if three and bishop g two to keep my bishop alive, and your bishop is not that great. So <clears throat> you know. Now remember, if well, but if the game is open, then 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 you don't. <clears throat> well, not really, because look at so if you, if you do that. That's a good. That's a good idea, but it doesn't work because if you, if you go to e4, I'll just stick it with the pawn. I mean with the bishop, and then I'm going to go back to g2, and let's say you play I don't know bishop, and then I'm gonna play e d4 with the same strategy. You're keeping your bishop out. I'm playing against your bishop because that's the one I don't have. You know what I mean? And that's something Capablanca used to say. So you get rid of the bishop, and then you put the pawns. On the on the same color of the bishop you don't have because I put I put the you know the, the pawns all in dark squares this one can can go around you know all the you know all the uh, the white squares but this one can't you know what I mean like it doesn't matter if you have one I still have I have I have one too to you know counteract you know that effect and then after you know. You know, you play root h3 and knight g2, then this bishop doesn't have a lot of squares either, you know. So, okay, so questions so far? We're, we're, we're here for. Yes. Any questions so far? What, what do you think? Look at this fly. So, um, <clears throat> so, okay, so. I want to show you this game. This game is obviously back, back at blank, you know. So this game is in the book <clears throat> Chess Fundamentals. In the chapter where, they, where this uh, game is, he talks about what do you do, like what to do when the opponent plays a gambit on you. He gives you like a free pawn or a free piece to try and get an attack. So in most cases, you should take it. You know, you should take it, try and defend, try and defuse the, the attack, and then go into a better endgame. 
So, and that's what, you know. Look, look at this guy, look at this guy. May I pay attention, man? Hello. So, <clears throat> Camarlanco was playing white here, right? So they play, you know, the Spanish Open, the, you know, the R R Lopez. Yeah. The three. So this is called the Stainitz defense, you know. This is playable, but it's slightly inferior. You should play A4 first. What? No, you should play A4 first. And then, and then after Bishop A4, then you play D6. So this is a slightly better version of playing um, the Steinitz. So, and also you're setting up a trap for, for, for white because if white goes d4, which looks like a, like a, you know, like a good move, right? You can go b, b5, and if bishop b3, you take on, on uh, d4. If knight takes, you take, and after queen takes c5. And then trap the bishop. I, I forget, the, what, what's the name of that trap? I forgot the name. But you have to be very careful, you know, after you move the queen, c4, you lose the bishop. So, he went straight with d6, he went d4, you know, so, you know. <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, the thing is, black has a plan. And, 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 and you'll see, because he's trying to sacrifice. And the way black is playing is a little, it's sort of, it's a little complicated. So already we are okay. So that, that's a good point. So I'm I'm white. I'm like okay. How do I analyze that position? So who do you think is better, Jax, and why? Um, well, I think it's called Eagles. Mm. What do you that's a good that's a good point. What do you think, Apis? Jax, what do you think? So if you look at Mark, uh, if you look at, at this position, like yeah, it's still super early, but you have to find a plan. Right, you know what I mean? So who do you think is better and why? Because you know you have to look at the yeah. You have to look at the position. And that's where it's complicated because you see the books and they're like, okay, so these are the the elements of the position, the pawn structure, you know, and this and that. But it's like, but but here's the problem. So we, it's a double center, double center pawn, double e pawn opening, right? So what has an advantage in development. The king is castle. He has to move with all the pieces once. You know. And he has a better, a healthier pawn structure, you know. So he has, so this is called a pawn island. And this is called, so he has two pawn islands, right? Black has double pawns. Obviously three pawn islands. And he's a little behind in development because he moved the knight and then he moved it back. But the, the thing is, black has the pair of bishops in an open game. So white has to be careful. Because, okay, white has the better post structure and advantage in development. But the advantage in development is a dynamic advantage. It goes away. Once black castles and finishes the development, you don't have it anymore. But you do have the better post structure. So, Kamalaka played queen one to play rook d8 because he has. We get control over the open file. Uh -huh. And if you could, you should also try and exchange this bishop for this bishop so black doesn't have a pair of bishops anymore. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Well, not, well, the point is hanging. Uh -huh. After rook the one, yeah, not, not, not right now, but, you know. So if you go nice c5, I'm gonna go rook here and then take the pawn. Maybe you th you think I'm a bishop a eight, but if you after rook d one, I take the queen with check. But you know, but but, but remember, we're, we're not looking. 
we're looking at the strategy side. You are telling me the tactic side, you know, we're looking at the ideas and then we're going to try and find the moves. Because remember, the ideas is like the GPS. The moves is you driving the car. So it's like if you only look only at moves, you're only going in circles. You're not, you know, you have to have the GPS, like the ideas. Okay, so because he has he, Black's only advantage is, and obviously, you know, even though he has uh, double pawns, the B file is open for the rooks. So, and that's part of the, you know, what Black did. So, but really, the only advantage Black has is the bishop there, really. So. It, that gives me the idea, oh, hey, if I could maybe swap for a bishop, then I'm going to be fine. You know, but that's just one of the moves. So he went rook d1, he went bishop, bishop d6, and again, the bishops are looking this way, you know. A possible idea, you know, could be f5 to try and get, you know. So he went here, and he got out of the way. Obviously, bishop b7 will be horrible, because... You know, yes, excuse me, because F, F6, I, I could give a check here. Well, F6, I would check and then take, take the rook if you have to move it. So you win a pawn, you know. So, so he got out of the way and then he's going to F5. So here Black made a decision, and this is what Capablanca says in the book. He played G6. And it looks like a bad move, but that was his plan because he's, he's uh, obviously after going to g6, he's going to lose the exchange. But black is gonna go, you know, f5 and bring and jump on white with, with the bishops and create an attack. So if that happens to you, you should take it and then you should try, then your plan should be to try and defuse the attack. And at the right moment, exchange everything and go into a better endgame. And the way he showed it here is beautiful. So he went to c5. He went, he went rook d2. There's no rush. This rook is not going anywhere. You know. Rook, rook b8. So you see how he's forcing black, white, defend already. He went 91. You don't want to go b3. Because that, that creates a lot of holes in the dark squares. And then you and you're gonna lose your your dark square bishop, so you you don't want to do that. So he went here. That's a great move, attacking the pump, you know, from the side. Come on, like I went c4. Then, but then he went 96. You see how he's, you know, creating a very dangerous attack already, and he he hasn't even he ha, he he have not even you know taken the rook. But the thing is, now he has to take it. Because if he doesn't, let's say he plays b3, he goes to g7 and saves the rook. <laughs> and then he really is in trouble. So he took it, and then he went to e3. He went to d4, he defended, and then he did the Philidor swing. You see how everything, but once you see it now, you know. So already, Black doesn't, you know, Black is down the exchange, but he has, he's looking at this pawn, he has a, a monster of a knight. This knight is in the corner. It can't, it can't jump, you know. You know, this bishop's coming over to b7. Or, you know. So, white has to be careful. So, if you're white, you try to hold it. Maybe exchange the most active piece. Try and get to an end game. Because, at, at the end of the day, you are the exchange up. But you have to be careful how you do that. You know. Go ahead. Uh, well, not really, because because I see two, I take the pawn, and then and then I take the rook, and then I take on. Well, it, maybe even with this pawn. So if you go to c two, right, you lose the pawn. I take the pawn, you take the knight, I take the rook, you take with the queen, and I could even take. I don't. I don't like taking with the pawn because then you have a four, so I can take with this pawn, and then I have a protected pass pawn. That you have to watch out for, you know. So it's go you can do that after you play b3. So he went b3, and then he went back to, to f3. But your idea was right, but the execution was not. Because remember, this is a bad knight. This is in the corner. And it's not going to do anything, because it's not going to g6 
It's not going to F5 because there's a pawn there. This knight is already in a good position. So the idea, it is a good idea to turn and get rid of the knight on, uh, on d4. But instead of going knight d2, knight c2, I mean, and using your knight that is already posted good, why not use the knight that is not posted in a great spot? You know. So black white f5. I mean, again, look at that position. You know, he, he's creating an attack. You know, if if what is not careful, you know, he's taking the bishop out. You know, getting the king out of the way, bringing the rook over, you can create you know a lot of problems. So he took an f5, and then he went back because eventually he will take on d4. But you know, no rush. And and if you're black, you don't want to take on f3 because then you know your knight is a great piece. So uh, I don't know about about that move. That move was a mistake. That move was a mistake. You know. Uh, if, I, if I'm black here, I'm going to play queen g7, probably. You know, to defend this pawn. And then I'm going to play, maybe, so... Well, I think you want to open up the white bishop. But, that, but that's the wrong way to open it, because the thing is, remember, Kamalaka used to always say, pawns are best when they're next to each other. And that's what we're looking at when we're doing the, the hanging pawns. Because this is kind of like a hanging pawns. You know, so when, when he plays f4, uh, so, okay, so, just so you know what I, what, what I mean. So, let's just play bad move by white, right? So, I'll go here, and then here, and then bishop here, and then rook here. That would be the plan that I would do. You know what I mean? And then these two pawns keep control a lot of important squares. You know, you want you want to keep the pawns next to each other as much as possible, you know what I mean? So because once you go at four, now there's holes in the white squares. You know, and Kavalanka took advantage of that right away. So he took only four, and then he got, so he got, so look it. So now he played queen h5. Capish. Come on now. So, <clears throat> I know, but you know, we were interrupting the class. <laughs> so, okay, queen h5. He did it eventually, but now he went the rook over and then he played f3. Now you see exactly why f4 was bad. Because now I probably. Double uh, on e2, the, the knight is not going to e4. And at, at, at the very least, I'm going to, well, not really. Already, black's attack is neutralized. Because with these pawns in the middle, because if the pawn was on f5 still, you have the chance to do e4 and open this one up, depending on you know what white does. So, but, excuse me, because he didn't, he kind of turned that black bishop into a bad bishop. You know, so he went here, and then he doubled to, to prevent, you know. And then if d3, then he would just take on, on e5, which is which is kind of what happened. Because if you exchange everything on d5, then we have queen and knight against queen and bishop. And why is better? This pawn looks threatening, but that pawn is not going anywhere. Because remember, the pawns are... The, the pawns are next to the center are in white squares. So black's bishop is bad bishop. You know what I mean? So so he went here and then white still see so this is what he's talking about. He neutralized black's attack, but then you have you get to a point where you have to kinda give some of the advantage back. So the guy has nothing. Because even though you're giving the exchange back, he's not gonna he won't do this because if he does, if he does that, but now you are a pawn up. This pawn is weak, and you have queen and knight. Remember, queen and knight is better than queen and bishop, and a lot of the times even better than rook and and, and queen. So he decided to keep the rook, but then after you know queen e eight, he's going to force big exchange and then go 
into a one in the game. You know, he's a pawn up. These two pawns are weak. What? Are uh, the bishop and the rook better than the knight and the bishop? Yes. The yes. But I'm a, remember, but why is the pawn up? And because all the pawns are in white squares, the bishop is bad. You know, and then, so I have I have two pawn islands. You have four pawn islands. And three of those are isolated. So yeah, that is true. But because the pawns are in white squares, and you're a pawn up, like, yeah, this is a passed pawn, but this pawn is on a fall. And then the one that is passed is easily blockaded by the knight. You know, so it's not really, you know, a threatening pawn. But the fact that he prepared to give back the exchange and then liquidate. You know, if you're winning, liquidate. You don't have to win in a super brilliant style. You have to win. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if it's boring. If I'm winning, I'm going to exchange everything and going to an angle. And that's what I learned from Capablanca. Yeah, I, I don't care. I want to win. You know, so he see attacking the pawns. We were down with the knight. They first he checked and then took one, one of the pawns. So he ended up, you know, even though he, so all the pawns, all the black pawns are isolated. So, you know, he ended up just picking up all the pawns. And then he took the last one and then he resigned. You know, because you're going to check. And then check, and then you know, and then you're fine. You know, <clears throat> so, so yeah. Question about that one so far. I have more games, so I'm you know, trying to give you everything, man. What do you think, my? Yeah, you know. But, 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 a, but a, a famous one? Sorry. The player that has the advantage not only has the chance to attack, but must attack. Otherwise, has the risk of losing the advantage. So, you know, so that, that's where, like, yeah, I have my style, but sometimes, sometimes the position demands you have to attack. You know, if you have an advantage in development, you have to. Because if you don't, you're going to lose the advantage. <laughs> You know, so no, yeah, you know, like even like me, even if you have to play more positioning, sometimes you have to. You know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> so <clears throat> let's see. the video like you said you know I didn't, I didn't have time to cut it the last one it, I've been so busy with work man which is good it's a good problem to have I'm not complaining you know but man so let's look at this game you know before we wrap it up because so this game again Cabana goes black so you're gonna see the importance of the seventh rank man, stop. Capiche, it's a lot of players, Capiche, I don't know. No, but I, I can't play, it's, it's gonna be too late. It's not even seven. But anyway, so, so look, Cabalanca was black, right? He's playing the, the Queen's Gambit. Nine baby seven, Bishop, you know. So you see, now you can take on F6 because the pawns are in dark squares. When Rook C1, C6. So, this maneuver that Cabalanca did, because white has less, a little less space, 
he used to take OC4 and then play 95 because the exchange of pieces benefit the, the player that has less space. You know what I mean? It's easier to equalize. So 27, he took the queen. You don't want to take on d5 because then, you know. <clears throat> so he took on c3 and then he played b6. And then eventually he'll do bishop here and play c5. Play d4, bishop b7, rook d8. And he shouldn't have done that, but, you know, he wouldn't. Um, nice c5. So, c4 looks interesting, but what, I mean, b4 looks interesting, but why is b4, why would b4 be a bad move? What do you think, Jax? Why would b4 be a bad move? Looks interesting. Hmm. What do you think? Kind of separated from a huh? Is kind of separated from a well, not really. What do you think, Jax? So that's something you have to do before to like gain space, but in this particular case, it's not really, you know. What do you think? What do you think, Mark? Well, I mean, you're going to weaken your structure. So that's the first thing I see, and you have to protect it. True, true. But you know, <clears throat> I thought I have to admit, you know, if it was a blitz game, I would have made a mistake there. Because if you go before, this looks interesting, right? Well, it still works. Yeah, it still works. You win a point because you got to take with the rook. And then I'm gonna take on d5. Okay, yeah. But you have rook d4 for threatening mate. Right. But I have a five defending the pawn and attacking the rook. <laughs> and then once you move the rook, then I'm gonna take the the the, the bishop, and then I'm gonna be a pawn up. So that's why it's bad. <clears throat> wow. that's you know, I thought it was it was it was wrong because of rook d4, but then I saw f5. I'm like, oh, so it does work. You know, but it took me, you know, I'm sorry, it took me a little bit because, it, you know, but even, you know, so that's why it's bad. So he took it a six and then he took it a nine. He went here. So here, you have to be careful because, you know, it looks like the pawn is, oh, there's, there's a free pawn there. But if you take the free pawn after rook a one. The queen is trapped. So, Kavaka played queen e5, which is a great move. <clears throat> you could say, oh, well, why wins a pawn? Okay. But after you take the pawn, he took on c c3, and after he took the rook, then he, he took the seventh rank. So, even though you are upon up, the knight is in the best spot because you always have to defend it. And I have the seventh rank. So you have no choice. You can't play rook to b3 because you have to defend the knight. And if you play b3, I take the pawn on a2 and still keep the seventh rank. So he played rook b1. So, okay, so you're defending the pawn, but now you can't move the knight because if you move the knight, I'm going to take the pawn on e4. So that was a great trade. Obviously, don't go rook c8 and fall into a check. Don't do that. You know. So, Kavalaka went rook e8. So, attacking the pawn, the, the knight is on the attack, the pawn is on the attack. For the cost of a pawn. You know. So he played e5. If he played f3, Black hat f5. And if you take it, then I have total control of the seventh rank, and you know, he's gonna lose. So, so he played it, he played e5, and then <clears throat> you know 
See, that's why, you know, that's my guy, man. You live so much. So, Camarga played a move that it, obviously, the, the first great move was queen e5, you know, so he could set this up. But here he played g5. Yeah, I wanted that. That was a great move. Why, what, why is g5 a, a good move, Jax? What do you think? Because, yeah, you want to make a little escape for, for, the, for the king, but if you could get killed two birds with one stone, you know? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> oh, oh, so you can no, uh, so no, take well, not only that, this, oh, all is not right. yeah, but it, it's simple, like, you want to make an escape for, for the king, right? But if I go h6, you go f4, you know, and it's a little hard. So, so g5 is giving the king some space and also preventing f4, <laughs> uh, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a multi-use move. Can you just like, take that bar a5? Is that awesome? Yeah. I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. That move kind of like, it's like what they call prophylactic. Uh, you're doing more than one thing with a Yeah. Movie. So, so now only control of space, where you got more uh, access to the center with the king. So it's like the strategy has more layers now. Yeah, it's like. So but the thing is, once you see it played, it's right. like, oh, right. like, you know, and that's what, that's the great thing about looking at Cavablanca's games. It's like, everything seems so natural. It's like, you know, right. so, so Capri said, why not take on, 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 on A7? Because I'm taking the pawn and then I'm going to E7, you know, it's so Pete, and then you have to watch it, you know. <clears throat> so he went here. That's a that's a awful move. He just took it. <laughs> he just took it. I mean, that's a horrible move because. And why was marked? Because now I have rook here and rook here. I mean, that's an awful move, you know. But yeah, he wants to be able to play f f four. But then you know, but then you are creating another problem. He went here. B4 was an interesting move because he wants to be able to move the rooks and be able to defend the knight. But he played B5, so he couldn't defend it. Now I'm looking at this. I could even, you know, take the pawn and then, you know, then I, see, now I'm going to G3. Now H3 is coming. He got out of the way. Nope. Because he wanted to, you know. He went back, he went to h3. Now you're creating another problem. Because let's say, let's say you go, let's say I go, I don't know, just to, to make a, a, a crazy move. Let's say I go to b2, right? And you take the pawn. Now you check me, because I'll, I'll just go h2. And after you take the pawn, you're checking me on h1, because you're creating a lot of problems now. You know, and it, and if you go to if you go to F one, it's still you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, so so you know, Black is just taking taking his time because he, he really cannot. Now he really cannot move the knight. If you move the knight, that thing is gonna happen. He won the six. He took it, and then he won the four. But you know, now I'm going to I'm I'm going to the two. You know, he's covering, he's covering G2, but he's running to go to G3, wow. and still, you know, check, on here, <clears throat> and, you, and you see how he's using the king, because that's something very hard for you to, you know, when I, when I say you, I mean me, to understanding use for a long time because when you got when you're in the end game the king is an attacking piece right, right. and i forgot that what, 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 what's that game because i see and i also learned that from that game because there's one of the games you know 
What, 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 what's that game? Man, I forgot that game. Oh, right here. Right here. Mm. Is Harriet? Mm. Let's say continue. No, it, it was fast. It was right here. I think. Uh, right here. So look at that game and the way he used his king. And that's where I learned it from. from. Because in this game, and I, I'll go to the end. Look at it. I've played this game before, but look at in I'm using my king. Look at he, he plays bishop f4. Now and I go king f5. And that's where, where I learned it from. You you have to use in the end game you have to use the king as an attacking piece. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, yeah, but, but, but. yeah. No, but I, I could be wrong. You know, that, that doesn't mean I have a, a monopoly knowledge. You know, I can be wrong. Yeah. You gotta work on the board, a bishop, a knight, and pawns. In my mind, like you said, the way Copper Blanker transitioned and started using his king, I think this we still in the middle game. Well, but, okay, so that's that's a great question. Right? That's a great question. But he, that was elusive. But that's a great question. But remember, okay, so. But if you're in the middle game, you never move your king. Well, of course. But, 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 that's what I'm okay, saying. But, but, so okay. For him to do that, but okay, so. Do that, that lets you know he's a genius. He, he transitioned no. like way ahead. Well, okay, so, so here we have changed the queens, right? So I think here we still kind of what is called a queenless middle game. Wait, wait, yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's the master. Because I'm not, I know he's the master. Man, but I can't be wrong, man. No, but no, I know you better know. Even in books, right? When you say basic end games, when you like basic end games, right? What's on the board with basic end games? Well, but, well, but, remember, king, but remember, they start they start you with pawn end games. You know, like a king and a pawn, so you're in the opposition. So, I mean, so okay, so this is the way I look, and this is my idea. So, I think I'm in the end game when you can easily mate my king. When you can easily mate my king. Oh, you can easily mate. You can't. Oh, you can't. So, when you can easily mate me, then I'm going to use my king as an attacking piece. You know, because like, so after we exchange a pair of rooks, so let's say, even here we're still kind of not in the end game, but after we exchange that piece, I think we're in the end game now. Because you can't really checkmate me easily now. You know, and even going back to the Capablanca game, this is the winning move right here. Because you have to keep control of the seventh rank. So, I, I'm keeping control of the seventh rank, and I'm preventing him from. Did you make that move? Yeah, that's what remember. So he can develop the, the bishop because I take the pawn, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking at this pawn too, and then my king is coming over too. My, my knight is coming over, so I went here. And, and look, that's kind of what you know, Capablanca. So so okay, so so he played here, right? So I'm like, okay, hold on. If if I play b6. Okay, so if I go b6, right, he's gonna go b3, and then either bishop f4 or bishop a3, and then the game's gonna be equal. So I play rook d8, sacrificing a pawn. I didn't see everything. I'm like, okay. So when I play rook here, I calculated up to rook c2. Up to here. So I'm like, okay, so I'll calculate it up to there. And then I'm like, okay, you try to assess the position. I'm like, okay, so from this position, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Like, but I didn't see it all the way because, it, but I, you know, that's what they call intuition. I'm like, I think I'm better there, you know, because he can develop, you know, my knights nice jumping, you know, my king is close to the center just in what's case. What's your plan at this moment? Like when you get to this position in the game, like what's your plan? Like what's your plan? Well, I, I play here. I'm going bishop. I'm going bishop d5. Okay. 
Um, you know what I mean? I'm going, I'm, I'm going, you know, 94, depending on what he does, you know, I could go here, you know, because he has to, he's, he's going to either lose or move this pawn. You know, and then I can, I can get in through the white squares, you know. So, and then, see, so I'm already kind of creating, you know. So he went here, and then I harassed the bishop. So, I harassed the bishop with the, so, if the bishop goes to here, I'm going to go here. So he went here, right? And I went here. So, and then, it, you know, he pretty, and then he lost the, you know, the rook. And then I, I keep using my king. And then I'm going here, and then I'm going here, and he finally resigned. <laughs> Yeah. So, but it, look, at, I'm using my king, you know, all the way, you know, but like I was, and that's why you always say people like, I know looking at a book from Casablanca is boring. I know it's boring, but you have to, because that's why I learned this. You know what I mean? Because you don't see cars. That was, that was, that was, that was a masterpiece. I enjoyed that. No, and it. But, and even here, like this move, you know, I, I played it because because you could go to G8, but I'm like, okay, he's gonna try and get his piece back, and we're gonna be close to the end game. So whenever the end game comes, I want to be close to the center, you know. So that's why here I played king here instead of king G8, and that's why I really allowed me to win the game later because because I were I was here when he played bishop before, I was able to harass the bishop, but I didn't know. That was gonna happen, but I'm like, okay, if my king is closer to the center, I'm better, better prepared for whatever comes, you know. Because like, like sometimes I, I, I may move and you think, oh my god, he saw, I didn't see everything. I just know I should be closer to the center. You know what I mean? So I happen to be there. <laughs> you know?